the Buddha has made uh, some sort of prediction that is very common. There is no period for the time. He says, uh, destructions of this whole earth or every living thing in this world uh, is due to three causes. Fire, wind, and weapon. So when we refer to him, the discovery of nuclear weapons and various other destructive uh, equipment is the decline of mankind by using man's own intelligence and uh, selfishness or okay. prey. So selfishness is the main cause of all our problems. In fact, people are not fighting or killing or destroying others just because they are starving, just because they haven't got anything to eat or they haven't got shelter or this or they got everything. But they are crazy for more and more power authority. Because of that, they want to destroy others. So that means craving is the main cause of all these problems. We have discussed up to 22, isn't it? Yes, 23, uh, not yet completed. Then physically and mentally our way of life started to deteriorate. We become more crazy, thinking that we are going to develop this world, slowly we are going to destroy. Natural things that we exist on this earth or in this world. We think that we can enjoy our life. We can have comfortable or peaceful life by destroying. But we cannot understand why all these things come into existence. Why they appear? For what purpose? We cannot understand. So we are so selfish. Destroy or burn or cut down or kill other living beings, plant life and hills and rocks Earth, but we never think that we are digging our own grave by doing that. Then we completely pollute the atmosphere, water, air. The start of all this. But in time to come, the situation becomes intolerable because man cannot satisfy with natural way of life. He wants to go against the nature for his pleasure, for his comfort, for his enjoyment. But other living beings never do that. All the other living beings who exist on this earth follow the natural way of life. They are 
food, their shelter, and their enjoyment of pleasure, everything natural. And they do not destroy for their own pleasure. When we were in primitive stage, we also followed the nature. At that time we were very strong, actually very healthy. But today, physically we are very weak because of our artificial life. So what we need is to create something which can be our eyes and pluck our tongue or the mouth and taste and sound. Most of those things that we take as enjoyment are artificial, not natural. So when we go against the nature or the natural way of life, then physically, mentally, we are going on declining, declining and deteriorating. In time to come, no more humane feeling. That means no humane qualities in the man's mind. And another thing that they have discovered, those who live in certain flats, the very high, strike about fifty, sixty, hundred, 50, 60, 100, uh, Slowly flat. So after one or two generations, the mental attitudes of those who live were entirely different. Because their connection with the earth and atmosphere is not normal. Touching this earth is just like uh, aerial or the ground, earth aerial, so radio or television channels. Very important. Yeah. Again, when we use uh, slippers and shoes, footwear, without touching the ground, we do not know how many kind of sicknesses that we do. So touching this ground is very important for our life. So that's why the artificial life completely ruins our way of life. Then the dress. Those days they have discovered their dress according to the climate of that particular country. But we follow the design and the materials that people have uh, discovered in cold countries. They are not suitable for the, the tropical countries, hot climate. We never think in that way. What we need is the beauty. Again, the building that we erect, those days we built all those things by considering the climate. But today we consider only design. We don't care whether this design is suitable for this country or not. Now you can understand everything in our life. We are organizing by going against the nature. So our food, our clothing, our shelter and medicine. Natural medicine, herbal medicine, no side effects. If that medicine can cure sickness, yes, okay, but we never suffer from side effects. But by taking modern drugs, 
we experience immediate relief. But after few days or same day, we experience side effects. We will not die. And later, create some other sicknesses. Certain drugs that we take for one sickness, yes, that drugs can cure this sickness but create another thing. Especially our kidneys, heart, brain, or the tender part of our organs, glands, will be affected. Not natural. Then our education. What is the purpose of education? Education is important for us to learn how to behave, how to live as respectable human beings, how to maintain discipline, how to live harmoniously without creating troubles and enmity and misunderstanding, how to live together as a community. Uh, these are the things that education has contributed for our living in those days and also to understand what this life is. And what is the nature of this world where we live? By realizing, by learning all these things, we adjust our way of life. Then we try our best not to disturb others, not to bluff others, Although we are poor, we can live without having any guilty conscience in our life, guilty feeling in our life. Just for the sake of enjoyment, we are trying to bluff each other. We are trying to swindle and rob. And we become very cruel to others to enjoy ourselves. Then where is the enjoyment in that? So education is completely gone out of it. So what is the aim of education to be? That is called job oriented education. Aiming at job, that's all by slaughtering others also through their education, if they can find out a job, they can draw a big salary, uh, that is the purpose of education. No mercy, no honesty, no sincerity, no kindness in human heart today. If education cannot cultivate these humane qualities, and what this modern education is doing. So this education creates very clever devils. Formerly, before this education, we were ordinary devils, not that bad. But after this education, we have become very clever devils. Because we use scientific knowledge, technology to destroy others, educate. How many people are there to think in this way? Because they are crazy for power, authority, enjoyment, selfishness. There are innocent people, no doubt, who like to lead a respectable life, who want to live peacefully without disturbing others. But those crooked people, selfish people, 
never allow those innocent people also to live peacefully. Take another example. When you study the history of India, during Emperor Asoka's time, that is nearly 2,300 years ago, he tried to introduce dharma. He always used the word dharma. Dharma means righteousness. That is religious way of life. Don't disturb others, don't harm others, don't discriminate others. These are the basic principles in Asoka Edict. When you read, you can see. And he did not encourage to train people how to fight or to declare war. He had done this earlier, before he became a Buddhist. He was known as cruel Asoka, who has massacred you know how many millions of human beings. But after realizing the cruelty, he tried to introduce dharma. So at that time, the whole country was very, very peaceful. No complaints. But after his death, trouble started. Later, foreigners also invaded that country. And they could not defend in certain areas. At once they had to surrender. Now the historians accuse Emperor Asoka for that. Because of his dharma, because of his righteous way of life, he did not train enough army to defend the country. Then had to surrender. Ah, that is what I wanted to tell you. When innocent people try to live by maintaining certain principles of good qualities or religious principles, many others who are cruel and selfish and cunning take the advantage. It is happening in many countries even today. Now this is the problem we have to face. So whether we are good or bad, suffering, unhappiness, uncertainty or insecurity, we have to experience. Now this very clearly shows what the Buddha has said earlier, again, let us come back to the book. As long as you exist in this world, whether you are good or bad, you have to face so many problems which are known as worldly conditions. The world is like that. You cannot find any world in the whole universe where you can live peacefully without facing certain problem either physically or mentally. There is no such thing. And this is the uncertainty of existence. Those who say why is it necessary for us to attain nirvana? Why can't we live here? Yes, you can live. But how long can you live without facing these problems? 
if not external disturbances or provocations, internal, natural problems. You are not exempted. Even in so-called heaven from the Buddhist point of view, heaven and Brahma, higher than this Devaloka, those living beings in such realms also face a lot of problems, physically as well as mentally, because their minds are not free from craving. So as long as craving remains in our mind, sufferings follow this craving. The very day when this craving is completely eradicated, then we will be free from all these things. So don't try to find out a place where you can live without facing problems or suffering. It is a day daydreams. Otherwise, we can make up our mind in this way. Not necessary to attain nirvana, because in nirvana we cannot enjoy. Within this lifetime, we perform lot of meritorious deeds, lot of good deeds, merits, right? then we can have a better life, better than this next life. Either to become a Deva or Brahma or very nice human beings, that is your aspiration to be born like that. Assume you got it. After gaining that, what guarantee is there that you can continue the same way of religious life from that life onward? Because mind is uncertain. Mind can be misled. Others can influence you to change your mental attitude. A child who is born in a very religious family, very cultured family, parents train this child also to behave exactly like them. Yes, at the beginning he is very good. Later he goes out and associates with bad companions. He can become a gangster or drug addict or very nasty person. Uh, this is the nature of human. Can change. Environment, companions can change our life. There is no guarantee. Again, how long can we continue this life after life? Impossible. Even in the case of the Buddha, let us take his previous birth. A man who had strong determination, aspiration to become a Buddha, to avoid evil, to do good and purify the mind, these three methods, he had been practicing, practicing life after life. Such a great man had strong conviction you know, when you read previous birth stories, yeah, he has done lot of mistakes, lot of bad things, sinful things or bad thoughts. Because he has not purified his mind completely at that time. So mind can be influenced or misled by others or temptation. Did not agitate. Now you are trying to be good. 
to lead a religious life as much as possible that you can, that we know. You don't like to harm others, but even then, can you guarantee? At this moment your minds are known, yes, but when you go out, circumstances, environment, situation, temptation and irritation completely change your mind. Later you can behave like devils. There is no guarantee. You cannot say no. But at this moment there are no such ingredients in your mind. Circumstances in the mind influence, arouse, appear. Then anger and grudge and enmity and craving and selfishness completely mislead the mind. Then you can do any nasty thing, any wicked thing. It is not that you do not know that it is wrong. You know it is wrong. But you have no control in power. And this is the nature of the mind. And that is why even the Buddha who had been working to become a Buddha occasionally, he has done some mistake and he had to pay. He did not hide. He said, I have done this and this and this mistake and that mistake and this is the way how I had to pay for all the bad deeds that I have done. Then he said, very practical, he has given us very practical advice. What is this? He said, all these advice that I give, I never mention these things as a theory. Or through my belief, but through my experience. Everything that I tell you, these things are wrong, these things are good, and this is the path or this is the method, not as theories or philosophy or anything, but according to my experience. Then he said, I can understand how I had to suffer because of my bad deeds, what I have done. So, very easily I can tell you why these things are wrong. So, not necessary for us to get this message from heaven to understand that these things are wrong. I am telling you according to my experience. Again he says, I always advise you to do certain things. Why? I have done all these good things earlier and I know how I experience the good result. Even now, today, within this lifetime, I am experiencing everything because of my good deeds that I have done. So there is no philosophy, no psychology, no logic, practical method through experience. So, so when we come to this advice given by the Buddha, the destruction of mankind, or deterioration, step by step. So when man started to destroy all the other living beings, living things, plant life, and man cannot understand the danger of 
existence of certain living things is real nuisance to us. It is true. But destroying them is not the solution. We cannot understand what will happen in time to come if we destroy all these living beings. In certain countries people have experience of it. They have seen. Even flies, mosquitoes, worms, rats, crocodiles, lizards, we do not know why they appear, for what purpose. To us, real nuisance, therefore we destroy them. But we never think. Our existence is a real curse to all the other living beings. What do you think? Not nuisance, real curse to all the other living beings on this earth. Because we are the one who destroy every living being, including our own human being. See how advanced we are. Now that is what I would say here in this Chakvati Chihanada Sutra. When deterioration started, uh, this is another icon. Man destroys everything for his own comfort, benefit, pleasure, without considering that he is digging his own grave. Do you know the Buddha considered the plant life very carefully. In many discourses, he advised people not to destroy plant life. Most of his time during the forty-five years he spent under the tree, the jungle. Again he was born under a tree and he died under a tree. So he respect the plant life. And in certain countries they have destroyed jungles. Now the country has become a desert and no rain, no water. People are dying, cannot plant vegetables. Again destroying hills, rocks, polluting water using chemical. We think actually we are progressing. We are not progressing. There is no ground to show that we are progressing. We are become more selfish, more crooked, more dangerous and more lazy. Uh, that is the development. Scientific discoveries done with good intention, but our selfishness, our cruelty, abuse all these modern scientific discoveries to destroy mankind, to destroy the world. Let us take atomic energy. Those who have discovered this energy had never had never an idea that they want to destroy, use this to destroy. But our selfishness, our crookedness, completely abuse, are using for destruction. So the life is in danger, the world is in danger. Even other planets are also in danger because of this. Therefore, how can we say we are progressing? Again, formerly, not few years ago, or few centuries ago, we were innocent. 
our selfishness and cunningness. These two things were not so advanced at that time. Today, you are not small child. You can see cunningness and selfishness. How far the children also develop this thing. So physically and mentally deteriorating. So life span going down and down and down because of this changes. No healthy body, no healthy mind. From every person's mind radiate jealousy, anger, enmity, intolerance, craving. Craving for nothing. Those who have more than enough for generations, not only for their family, more than enough for generations, are still develop their craving to gain more and more. Now that is called crazy attitude. No contentment, no satisfaction. Everybody is worried. And nobody knows why they want. But they have enough food, clothing, nice house, motor car, television, everything. But burglar alarms must be there. Even then, no security, no guarantee. Then who come and disturb us? We always talk about devils and ghosts and hantu and this and that. Blame them. Have you ever seen any devil or any ghost enter into a house and take away your things? And who are those devils who enter into a house, threaten you, frighten you, kill you? Human devils. No one can live without fear. Then where is happiness? We are working day and night like slaves to earn more and more and more, to enjoy. But no enjoy. Some people go on dumping, dumping, collecting, accumulating, that's all. Ah, that is the only enjoy. In the end, when they grow old, they say, how to die, I have so much. <laughs> Cannot die. You cannot die peacefully. A poor man can die peacefully. I don't care. I am ready to die at any time. Poor man can say. Now I can die at any time. Nothing to worry. I haven't got any personal property. Nothing. So I don't worry about it. But many others can. You see how to die? Uh, these are the problems the Buddha has given five kinds of warning, advice, for us to ponder, concentrate early, to avoid this tension and fear, because naturally they come to us. Whatever method we adapt to avoid, to escape, it is impossible to escape. Only thing by using modern scientific technological method, we can prolong or postpone for one or two years. That's all. That is the only thing that we can do. A man who is going to die in the hospital, by using all sorts of oxygen tanks and this and that and this gadget and that gadget, and allow that machine, this machine to maintain for few more days. When they remove all these things, finish. 
Uh, this is modern development. Can you stop? So what are these advices given by the Buddha? Jara dhammo mi jarang anatito ti abhinhang pachyavik kitabha. Vyadi dhammo mi vyadhin anatito ti abhinhang pachyavik kitabha. Marana dhammo mi maranang anatito ti abhinhang pachyavik kitabha. Kammasako mi kammadayado kammayo mi kammabandhu kammapatikara. Sabbehi me pehi manapehi nana bhavo vina bhavo. These are the five. This is for meditation. Instead of sitting down, closing your eyes, creating daydreams as your meditation, if you can contemplate on these five points, this gives a lot of consolation, satisfaction to avoid your worries and fear and tension and disappointment, unsatisfactoriness in your life, because you are going on training, 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 training your mind. After that, no more worries. What are those five? This, the name of this sutra is called Abhinna Pacha Kitabha Sutra. The sutra that we have to concentrate always, contemplate, you, you might have heard more than thousand times this point. But can you tell me? I recited only in Pali. I am sure you have heard. Can you tell what is the first one? Now this is another weakness in you. Because you never try to learn anything systematically. In random here and there you learn one or two points. You don't take the trouble to remember. Uh, what is the first item? Jara dhammo mi jarang anati to ti abhinnan pati. You must always think that I have not gone beyond old age, decay. Slowly, 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 slowly. I am approaching, I am reaching towards old age. Do you think that? Do you think how to have escape? Just so. But it doesn't work. When you train your mind, what will happen? When you grow old, you never worry. Because you knew definitely that this come to me, it is natural. Face it. Ah, then no worry. Second one. Vyadi dhammo mi vyadi nganati to ti abhintam pa te What is that? I am not free from sicknesses. At any time, any kind of sickness can come to me. No one is free from sickness. No one is free. That is the second thing. Marana dhammo mi maranang anati to ti abhinnang pachyavitti dhamma. I think you know this word, isn't it? What is that? What is marana? That. That is natural. I cannot stop that. No one can stop that. One day, definitely, I have to face this thing because it is natural. So when you train our mind by thinking in this way, the fear of death completely disappears from the mind. After that, we are not scared of death. Any time when they come to know that death is nearer to them, they won't get alarmed. Not scared. They can die peacefully. That is the third one. Fourth one, 
అమ్మసుకోమి కమ్ము దాయాదో కమ్ము యోని కమ్ము బంధు కమ్ము బంధర చేంజెస్ ఇన్ మై లైఫ్ ప్లెసెంట్ అన్ప్లెసెంట్ ప్లెసరబుల్ ఓ మిసరబుల్ మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ దోస్ చేంజెస్ టేక్ ప్లేస్ డ్యూ టు మై ఓన్ కర్మ వాట్ ఐ హ్యావ్ డన్ so others are not responsible then we can avoid accusing cursing blaming others so i am responsible for my own pleasure my peaceful life i am also responsible for my miserable life although i have not done anything wrong within this lifetime i do not know what i have done during one of my previous so i am subject to the consequences of my own karma i cannot experience the good and bad effect of another person's karma please remember this i cannot create good or bad karma for you you cannot create good or bad karma for me but i can create condition i can create the environment for you to create either good karma or bad karma because your mind create your own karma another person's mind cannot create karma for you so my karma is responsible for my life by knowing this we must know how to adjust our way of life try to avoid as much as possible from bad karma try to do as much as possible good karma because we knew the future or the existence of this life depends on our own karma not depend on buddha or bodhisattva or god or brahma i am responsible for my life now there is a fourth one last one sabbe ye manate nana bhav vina bhav we have so many things that we like so much love to wife husband children property jewelry land houses so many things which we like but remember definitely one day we had to separate from all those things and when that day comes to you don't cry don't commit suicide think early you love your wife so much if anything happened to your wife one day earlier you cannot tolerate either you commit suicide and the wife or the wife like that. one of your children beloved one die suddenly due to accident or some sickness you cannot tolerate because so much affection attachment craving you have this it is natural definitely one day we have to settle it it is not if not earlier after our death we have to separate from again all our belongings that we accumulate as most valuable precious things jewelry money peace can take it fire flood earthquake in the government also can confiscate if you abused the way how you earn god there is no guarantee that these things never separate from one another thing 
assume you could manage to maintain all these things until you die. But do you believe after your death you can carry anything with you? Impossible. But you know that there will be another life. And you are responsible for that life. There is nobody else to take responsibility for that life. It is not that you purposely create that life. Your way of life, your mentality, your mind conditions. The formation takes place according to your mental attitude. Therefore, at the last moment you cannot change it. So by knowing, you had to accumulate something which thieves cannot take away, fire cannot destroy, flood cannot destroy, white tent or rats cannot destroy, or the government cannot confiscate. Impossible for others to destroy. There is only one purpose that you can carry with you. That is the only thing you can carry. All your good karma and bad karma. They never separate from you. Wherever you go, they also follow just like your shadow. Whether good place or bad place, no different. Shadow also follows you. In the same. So your life so will be molded by considering all those accumulated karmic forces in your mind. Now that is the only thing that you can carry with you. So if you like to have a peaceful life, a life where you do not experience so much sufferings and problems, what you have to do? Prepare something for that life. Don't go with empty hands. What will happen if you go from here with empty hands? Can you answer this question? Is there anyone who can say something? If you go away from this world with empty hand, what will happen? What is your fate? Can you tell me? You have heard? I have explained. Cannot. Can you go to heaven? Or if not, do you think you go to hell? No. Or if not, you become an animal? No. Or you are prayed, finish. What what will happen to you? Assume you have not done accumulated enough good karma for the next world. At the same time you also have not done very bad karma. Then what is your fate? Now, this is a very good lesson for you to learn. Can you stop rebirth? Now then, what will happen? Stop out. <laughs> uh, you have not learned this, eh? I think you have forgotten. If you have done more good karma, then you get the chance to become a human being, perfect human being. Perfect means with five senses, sound mind and healthy and peaceful life, human life. But problems are there, natural ones. If you have accumulated some more good karma, then you may get the chance to be born in one of the deva loka heaven, so-called heaven, but not permanent. All right. Now good karma. Bad karma, if you have done 
bad karma. Rebirth can take place in a very miserable, suffering state, which we introduce as hell. I told you, hell is not a ready-made particular place. There are, there are sufferings that is hell. The rebirth can take place in such places. A certain bad karma creates an animal life where those living beings suffer a lot. And then, now my question is, if we have not done enough good karma or not committed bad karma, what is your fate? What will happen to you? Still you're going to catch. I have told you there are thirty-one planes of existence. So after our death, according to the degree or the gravity of our good and bad karma, we will take place in one of those thirty-one planes of existence. Among those thirty-one planes, there are four planes known as a spirit's world. You introduce them as ghost, a spirit. If they have done very bad karma, they never remain there. They go further into suffering state. If they have done good karma, either humans or devas. Uh, this is in between. It is a miserable life, but not a suffering stage just like hell or animal. Very tender formations of life which is invisible. And they remain there for certain period, either for few days or few weeks, few months or hundred years or thousand years, nobody knows. Then, uh, this is the reason why we remember our departed one, why we transfer the marriage. So what we do actually we cannot change their way of life, transferring marriage is a misconception. If you think those who suffer in hell or in animal kingdom or somewhere else, simply by transferring marriage we can relieve them. It is impossible. If not, why not you go to Pudu jail and release all those people? <laughs> it doesn't work. So what, actually what we are doing, all those who were born there in a spirit form and that existence has taken place according to the last thought that which appeared in that particular person's mind. Since he could not recall either a strong good karma or bad karma because mind was not influenced earlier by doing good karma or bad karma. You understand? Now when you do bad thing, you are going on bothering, 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 disturbing your mind for a long time. That means influence the mind. The bad action influence your mind. Again when you do some good deed, you experience happiness of your good deed. That means you influence your mind. So when you are going to die, very easy for you to recall or appear one of, either one of these good karma or bad karma, which influence the mind. Since these people have not done this very weak, very weak karma they have, at the dying moment could not get enough good karma. But Existence must take 
and certain weak karma. They are not good karma. Conditioned or generated for such people to reappear or exist again in a spirit form. So what we can do by performing some merit, we radiate our mental vibration with good intention, kindness, compassion, understanding. We can influence because of our relationship. You understand? Our mental relationship. Not disconnected. Mental communication I still can maintain. Because of that, our mental vibration by performing some merit we transfer affects them. Then what will happen? They get the chance to recall certain good karma that they have done earlier, because formerly they were submerged, had no chance to come up to the surface of the And then they get another rebirth of okay. Maybe a better one. And this is the way how it works. Because many people cannot understand how we transfer the merit, how they receive, and whether it is true. And this is the psychological interpretation. Very practical way the Buddha has explained all this. So, I started to talk about decline of mankind. Yes, this is also decline of mankind. <laughs> then, having seen destruction, deteriorating, suffering, Now, Japan, first time in their life they experience the bad effect of atom bomb. Even today, they say, we don't want any more war, because they had it, tested. That's only a very baby atom bomb. They realize. The danger of atom bomb. So having seen disaster, destruction, suffering, very few people start to think why all these unfortunate occurrences, incidents take place. They slowly some sort of realization appears in their mind. Oh, our behavior. Our behavior is responsible for this discussion. Then go on thinking and thinking and thinking and discussing. This will become the turning point again. Go on up to the bottom and again turn this way. Then going on developing and developing and developing and developing in more and more good qualities, virtues, precepts, principles and humane qualities, they start to And then healthy life, healthy mind, contented life, peaceful life, satisfaction, all these things they come back. In going on increasing and increasing and increasing, life span also going on increasing, 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 higher and higher. Now that is the time, the Buddha says, the next Buddha, the Maitre Buddha will appear. We, we can produce, so we can create any Buddha at any time. 
but this is the way how Buddha has been doing. So we cannot calculate in terms of years, because these things take place gradually, again this way also gradually. Another thing the Buddha says, when the maximum lifespan develops, such a long period, the Buddha never appear at that time. That is why the Bodhisattva, after fulfilling all the perfections and the qualities and the virtues and knowledge and everything, they are waiting by observing, watching very carefully, which is the suitable time for him to appear on this earth, to become a Buddha. When the lifespan increase up to the maximum level, people do not experience very much suffering, sicknesses, old age. At that time it is impossible to introduce a religion. Even today, many of those multi-millionaires who got more than enough money have no time to come to the temple, come and attend to this kind of talk, think about religion, they are very busy. Exactly like this. Again, Devas and Brahma also have no chance to accumulate marriage, cultivate their spiritual way of life, because the formation, the situation of their life is sun. We remember religion or try to adjust or try to follow a religion according to our experience. If there are no sufferings and troubles and problems, people never remember religion. Many people remember the temple when the ghosts and hantus and devil disturb oh, and then they come to the temple. Otherwise, not necessary. Oh, no doubt they create their own imagination, but remember religion. When somebody dies, ah, then remember. Not because that they really love this departed person. If they don't do something according to their religion, they think that departed person may come and catch their neck and uh, to avoid this, uh, they perform some sort of religious service. If, the, if that never takes place, nobody wants to practice a religion. They don't want any religion. What for? That's what I always say. Those who try to introduce religion, talking about heaven and hell. If heavens and hells are closed down, there is nothing for them to talk about religion. What is there to talk? They say, if you do this, if you believe this, you go to heaven. If you don't believe, if you do this, you go to hell. If no heaven and no hell and no nothing to talk. But Buddhism is not that type of religion. Without heaven, without hell, we, get, we have a lot of things to discuss as religion. Because we do not depend on heaven and hell to lead a religious life or noble life or respectable life. So, during that period when the life span increase up to the maximum level, they experience only hunger, very good appetite, and laziness. They don't want to work. Then in the end, old age. Free from all the other problems that we are facing. They suffer from hunger and laziness or sluggishness. It's not old age. In the end, death. After they are dead, they do not know 
what would be the fate, what will happen to you. But here we know very well. We can understand what will happen to us. We are preparing for that. Then the Buddhas who appear from time to time by considering the worldly condition, mentality, whether human beings can understand what he is going to preach, even the Buddha, after working so hard to enlighten others, but when he gained his enlightenment, when he observed, surveyed others' mentality, understanding capacity, he realized people cannot understand because their minds are deluded, clouded, misled. So many other concepts and beliefs, and it is very difficult to remove all these things from their minds. So people are not ready to listen. So by considering and considering, then we knew at least there will be few people who can understand. And then he started to feel. But at the beginning, when the Buddha was there, how many Buddhists were there in India? Very few. Don't think the whole country was a Buddhist country when the Buddha was there. During Emperor Asoka's time, he introduced this. Thing. But during the Buddha's time, only those who could understand what the Buddha preached accepted this. Thing. And many of those kings and ministers and multimillionaires who supported the Buddha were not Buddhist actually. They did not accept Buddhism but they appreciated the Buddha. And later, later part of their life, some of them accepted Buddhism. So it will take time for them to get rid of their preconceived or the, the ideas they had earlier, or belief, to get rid of them and to accommodate new concepts. The Buddha's teaching at that time was entirely a new doctrine that people have never heard. So that is why people could not understand and could not accept. So during certain Buddha's period, previous Buddha, before Sakya Muni or Gautama the Buddha, Kakusanda Konagama Kasyapa. Kasyapa was the name of the previous Buddha. And his religion or dharma that he introduced did not last long. Disappeared very soon. And he did not preach very much. The Buddha has revealed it. The reason is, when Kāsapa Buddha or the previous Buddha appeared in this world, immorals, crimes and uh, bad deeds and selfishness and evil forces were not deeply rooted in their mind at that time. Because of that, he did not preach very much. Because the Buddhas never preach without any incident. They never go on preaching like a tape recorder. Whenever there is, when you read Dhamma Father, more than 300 incidents, one saying, one or two sayings of the Buddha, 
there because of that incident. So always we preach whenever there is bad deeds or wicked things or cruel or harmful or this or that. Otherwise they don't preach. No, no ground. It's just like this. Parliament is here in every country. Never introduce new laws if there are no people to violate peace and happiness of innocent people. More and more new laws the government enforce, the more we disturb others. In the same way, the Buddhas also preach when there are certain incidents. So the Kasapa Buddha's time was not that bad. Because of that he did not preach very much. But during the Sakyamuni or the Gautama, the Buddha's time, the period was very bad. A lot of crimes and immorals and evil and wicked and cunning, selfish practices were there. Therefore he had to preach for forty-five years, day and night. Uh, that is why his doctrine, his dharma is very rich. The whole Tripitaka, when you collect, you can see forty-five years teaching because of those things. Now if people are good here in this country, if all are honest and kind and cooperative and understanding, the government has nothing to do. And no jail, no police, no army, nothing they can withdraw. Just because we are bad, just because we are unreliable, then government also introduce more and more new laws. It is understood. Uh, this is the end of this discourse. Chakravati, Kihanada Sutra, in Jivanikai, very long one. I mentioned only item, item by item. Now we have gone up to the top again. Now we are going down, down and down and down. Take long time. We, we are not that bad, but later we become very bad. <laughs> okay, nice. Pagatadu matta deva naga maitrika hunyantanga no ditta kiram rakhantalo katatanam devo atpatale nanatatam patri yuchite Vito bhavatulo ko se raja bhavatudam niko idango nati nango tu sukita hum tajate yo ibina pande kamme na mahami bala samagamo satam samagamo tu yao nikwana patya.